Next up is the piston assembly. It's going to be made from this piece of brass bar. Um, the diameter of the piston head itself is 12 millimeters. This brass bar is quite a bit bigger than that, so there'll be a bit of turning down to do. Um, I've been a bit worried about the piston because you know I'm relatively inexperienced, and um, you know what I find is you try and creep down to a diameter and when you're turning it using fine sandpaper or whatever and then the danger is that you creep right past it and make the thing too small. I don't want that to happen to the piston otherwise it'll, without, within, outside of certain tolerances it'll, it'll just ruin it. So I'll have to be careful. I do have a reasonable length of bar here so you know it may be that I can afford to sacrifice one you know, botched attempt, but oh, I'm hoping to avoid that. Um, one thing I like about the Steve's Workshop oscillator design is that the pistons are one piece um, uh, item. The head, the connecting rod and the big end are all made out of one piece of brass. I kind of like the aesthetic of that rather than for a small engine having it in different sections. For, certainly for an engine as small as this. Now, um, the philosophy, if you like, behind Steve's build, I think, is that it's designed for people with very little experience, maybe people with even less experience than, than myself um, are expected to be able to build it. So it's done in a very simple, straightforward way, no fancy profiling and shaping and so on and so forth. I think that's a sound a sound uh, principle on his part. However, I, you know, I, I might like to get a little bit more adventurous than that. I've just acquired these two very nice uh, round-nosed carbide-tipped turning tools, and so I'm hoping I might be able to use certainly the smaller one of these at least to perhaps make a couple of, you know, make a couple of little curves. You know, it's not as shallow as that, steeper than that, and you know, these kind of areas there, just to make it a little bit more um, elegant looking. So I'll see how I go with that, that's not critical. The main thing is that the piston fits the cylinder, and the cylinder will be used as a guide for the actual finished diameter of the piston. So let's get going. So having honed the cylinder with the flex hone, and given it a little smear of steam engine cylinder oil inside. I'm just going to check that the bore is parallel, cylindrical, rather than cone-shaped. Well, I expect that there will be some slight discrepancy, but I'm going to use this gauge, which is a kind of split-ball bore gauge, and you just um, turn the little knob at the bottom, and that opens and closes the, the split ball. So you can put that inside the bore and open it up, and then measure the ball with a micrometer, I've got a digital micrometer here, um, and um, uh, I'm going to take about three measurements, one at each end of the cylinder bore and one in the middle. I don't think it's going to be absolutely critical here, but I mean, you know, we're hoping that it's not going to be too far out before I make the piston. Here's the verdict. At the top of the cylinder, the bore is 12.304 millimetres, in the middle is 12.310, and at the bottom is 12.334. So overall, there's a difference in diameter of three hundredths of a millimetre from one end of this little cylinder to the other. So I'm using a parting tool to reach in and start to narrow down what will eventually be the connecting rod beneath to the left of the the piston itself. Easier to get in with a, a narrow parting tool than it is with a, a bigger lathe tool. Turning the piston head, whoop, using a tool at first. Roughing it out, we'll go on to find the sandpaper afterwards. So oh, you see, the head of the piston is pretty close now. It won't go into the cylinder, but it's trying to go in. You can do that, but it won't go in. It won't try to force it. But this is where I need to stop with the lathe tools and start being very cautious, um, but advancing with um, some fine grit sandpaper or emery, which I'll do now. What you do is you take light strokes and you keep stopping, wiping it clean, and then testing it for fit. 
I understand that to be the case. I've never done this before. Exciting new territory for me. So we're getting very close now. So what you have to do is make sure that your your abrasive is held flat on something like this, it's a piece of wood, and just keep it parallel to the bore of the cylinder, the, the cylinder, sorry, the piston, and that way you don't end up with a tapered piston, hopefully. Um, I'm not going to try and do this on camera, but there's, you can see where the brass has come off. It comes off quite quickly. Very light, very light strokes are all that are needed. So I think we got there. It wasn't so difficult. Um, it's gliding nicely on and off there. I was dreading this bit. This was the one bit that I thought was going to be a nightmare, and actually it turned out to be quite easy. Um, sometimes that's the way of it. But I also think one learns fast in this line of work, um, line of play, if that's what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, once you get your hand in with, you know, gradually whittling things down with emery paper or whatever, it does come uh, as a feel thing. There is a s s suction there when I put my thumb over the end and you can maybe hear that. Yeah. Um, there's a slight wiggle when it's out right at the end of the stroke, so I don't know if that's in any way a problem, because as soon as it's further in, it's, there's no wiggle at all. I think it's probably fine, and I could always maybe you know, put some packing in a groove around it if I need to, or something like that. I'm not going to start again at this point, because it's probably as good a fit as one needs. But with little experience of these things, you're kind of working by, um, you know, you're on kind of guesswork in a way, and by advice on forums. So I'm quite pleased with the way this is taking shape. Um, it's all been marked out and measured out to size. The little round profiling still is making a nice little radius in the root of that uh, connecting rod, and we're not down to diameter yet. It's a bit trickier at the top because I don't want to encroach on the piston head, but it might leave a nice enough feature there anyway. I'll just play with it until it looks about right. As long as the piston head diameter is right and the distance from the crank pin hole is about right, then I don't see any issue really with everything else, apart from aesthetics. Well, you might say quite a nice little piston, but unfortunately it's about two critical millimetres too short. I've got no idea how that happened. Um, I thought I'd measured it out carefully. But the way it is, is that if I were to drill the cross hole through that big end in the right place, relative to the end of the piston, it would be coming, there'd be hardly any metal there behind it, and the hole would shear out of the, the end of the big end. So it's going to have to be redone. Another issue which has become apparent is that that slight discrepancy in the bore of the cylinder from one end to the other has actually is actually critical. Um, and the piston glides in fairly nicely in the bottom of the cylinder, but it won't come towards the top any further than that because it gets bound. So I'm going to have to do a bit more honing work on the cylinder, and I'm going to have to go very closely, very carefully, rather, to um, make sure I don't just, you know, create the opposite problem. But at least this piston, even though it's too short and it'll need to be remade, it'll act as a gauge. Meanwhile, while I do that to the cylinder. Don't think any of this is majorly problematic, it's just these things take time. Well, the cylinder fix went easily enough. It um, didn't take much, it just... Whoop, there we go. It, um, there's a nice pop when you put your finger over the end and pull the piston out. It creates a nice vacuum. It's all good, but uh, everything would be fine now, but I just need to make another piston. You have to be careful with the piston diameter, because if you go too far, you you have to start again. But I think if I go nice and slow, I just need to make sure that the, the connecting rod and the big end are a bit longer, and we'll be cooking on gas. So I've decided to make the new piston using the ER32 collet chuck instead of the three-jaw. Reason being that there was a slight run out on the... Uh, three jaw before and I don't think it would have been critical with the previous piston but it was enough to make me want to you know, to do it this way which is really a good way to do it 
to, yep, um, I'm not going to video the rest of this because other than that it's just the same as it went before. I like this layout fluid but it does take a while to dry. I love those round nose turning tools. So, there's the new piston next to the old one. How on earth did I manage to make that mistake? I don't know. You can see where the, the crank pin will go through that blue mark there and you can see how it wouldn't have worked on the original botched piston. However, it's good experience. These are the only two pistons I've ever made and they both fit the cylinder, so I'm pleased enough. So just a tiny little bit of difference from Steve's original uh, drawings. Um, I'm milling a, a flat on each side of the big end, just for kind of looks really, just make it a bit more refined. And I've also, you know, put a little bit of a curve profile where the connecting rod joins the big end and the piston head. Um, I think, you know, as I said before, it's to Steve's credit that he um, designed this engine to be made really simply on just very, you know, a lathe and very little else drill press. Um, and he kept it really simple. I think that's to his credit because, you know, it's helpful to a lot of people. Um, but I do have the, well, the wherewithal to, you know, just add a few refinements. So I think I'm, you know, quite happy to do that. Uh, see how it goes. So now I'm mark using the digital height gauge to mark out the distance between the end of the piston and the hole for the crank pin. 40 millimetres. So I use the half function on the DRO uh, to position the y-axis so that the hole's central to the, the big end. I mean, you can't really call it a big end because it's very small. Um, and I've used a scriber held in the drill chuck to locate the line that I drew on the digital high gauge. So that's pretty accurate, I think. So I decided to finish off the two short piston anyway, just for fun. Um, so there they are, both of them. Um, the short one will give to my lovely lady as a little present to put in her key ring or something like that. Mm, this is a good sign. Bit of steam oil in there works wonders actually. You need to take on get that piston spinning back around it. Very happy with that. Just giving it the Myford boy fondle now. The only difference is the micro boy is 100 times more still than me and it's 100 times quieter. Other than that, pretty similar.